Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Praetorian. And Jinx here. And welcome back to Disco Elysium on the PlayStation 4 Pro. All right, so let's go and get started in today's episode, which will open up by going into... Do we have enough points to upgrade? No, not yet. We need 15 more experience points to level up. So we're going to start out today's episode by interacting with the new stuff we just got. Uh, so, of course, we have this here, which is to help us interact with the body. We have the lieutenant's handkerchief. And we also have the empty cassette tape. Let's see what else we got through here. Clipboard. And then we have our uh, new mug, the yellow man mug. So it's this racist cup that we found. Oh, triangle. That's how it's you interact. just a racist mug. What's there to read here? Not much. Oh, boy. Here we go. What are you going to say about a broken, tossed away mug that you dug out of the garbage? Okay, so which option you want to go with? And this is completely new to me because I don't think I picked up the mug the first time I played. Uh, this mug is an example of prejudice. I'm going to use it as an example of what not to do. I'm going to push this into the face of every merchant I find and tell them this isn't your inane ideology. Because a lot of the merchants are pretty racist in this game. Uh, the mug will be useful. By announcing it, I can earn political capital to mask my badass hustling, i.e. fraud and embezzlement. I like fraud and embezzlement. <laughs> <laughs> or you can say the mug didn't belong in the trash. It was just a funny mug. Can't anyone laugh anymore. Uh, so I think this is like what polit this is what politicians do, of course. <laughs> they don't care about like I can use the this racism yeah. to outrage someone someday. Yeah, to mask them doing illegal stuff. <laughs> that's that's funny and a good political way they to look get at in it. They trouble and they're like, look at this Ooh. racist mug. Look at the racism. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so we could say that one, I suppose. We'd also just go with one of these ones here and say it's an example of what not to do. I think we should use it against the merchants to get discounts. <laughs> you think we should say this one? Yes. Okay, so we'll go with that one. That's what Jinx wants to say. So again... You dug it out of the trash. Why? It wasn't going to offend anyone there. Why don't you just get back to your case? And you notice how the objects also kind of talk to you. And you'll see that throughout the uh, the game. That the, the objects will be talking to you. Uh, so let's go and interact with our damaged ledger. It's the ledger you found in the trash. A pitiful cabbage of white and yellow papers hanging from plastic board. Barely held together by a metal clip. This sad display is made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. There's a piece of toilet paper, or is it cleaning tissue? No, it's toilet paper, desperately sticking to the back of the blue plastic clipboard. It's a metaphor for you. <laughs> I've never heard anybody pronounce it urinal. Urinal. I don't know if it was pronounced urinal, but <laughs> I guess that's the way he's pronouncing it here. And uh, we can now inspect it fully. Maybe clean it up a little bit. We're going to try. We're going to try and clean it up as, as best as possible. We're going to start at the top here and just go all the way down with it. Uh, so we're going to inspect the, the toilet paper, which... Yourself. Hopefully it doesn't have poop all over it. Uh, if it is a metaphor for ourselves, then it should have poop all over <laughs> it. It's just toilet paper sticking to the back of the plastic clipboard. You can take it off if you want. Still wet. The toilet paper peels off the plastic easily. All you have to do is shake it off with your finger and voila, the ledger now looks marginally better. An aluminium block runs the width of the board, biting down on the paperwork. Its crocodile teeth are the only thing keeping the papers together. A regular pencil, the tip worn down to nothing, has been attached to the clip. The surface is interrupted by a silvery sticker. It's rectangular sparkling with iridescence. You don't know how you didn't notice it before. What? That thing. It's a halogen watermark. We use it for adding information to RCM property. It depends. Aside from an anti-counterfeiting stamp, mine has my station number and address. The information varies by date of issue. Maybe yours will have how many cases you've solved. Any capable light with the right wavelength will do. All RCM vehicles have headlights designed to reveal halogen watermarks. Mine too. This means you can read the watermarks if you just turn the lights on. Okay. 
while a bunch of sodden papers sag from the clipboard in your hand. It's a sorry sight. They're not exactly white. They're yellowed in patches by sunlight and alcohol and covered in dense blue handwriting. Ink escapes into watercolor patterns, reaching its tendrils across entire pages. The paper itself is checkered with faint red lines forming short paragraphs. Once in a while, there's a red stamp that exclaims, case files commit to paper. The case files themselves are plenty. You count more than a hundred sodden, crumpled up, earmarked pages falling apart in your hands. They appear to be sufficiently organized and extremely dense, if mostly illegible. Work, strife, poverty, the Jamrock Quarter, these are handwritten logs of investigations dating back to January 51, this year. The exact number is hard to estimate, due to missing pages and an odd naming convention. But there are at least 20, maybe 30 cases, undertaken, not completed, mind you. It's the middle of March. You have attempted two cases a week on average. Huh? Two complex cases to undertake is a lot, yes. You really have to push yourself. I would not suggest it, lest you start making mistakes. Two? That's a lot. I didn't mean to say you are making mistakes, by the way. That was presumptuous of me. I prefer a normal caseload. It's a matter of method. Like a fan of girls, the checkered papers dry in your hand. The handwriting is extremely dense, if mostly illegible. Yes, it appears you employ a, shall we say, robust yet literary system. Each investigation has its case number written on the margins. Yet, still more tellingly, most are accompanied by a name. A title, one might say even. One that draws inspiration from snoop fiction and vespertine cop show staples. Yes, all caps. One is called the Next World Mural. Another, the Square Bullet Hole Murders. Another yet, the Unsolvable Case. Others appear more light-hearted. The guys on a couch in an unexpected location and the murder at the hookah parlor. Even the rare article free collapsing tenement. Murder features prominently throughout. It's going to take an effort to piece these case files together but it can be done, once you're done inspecting them up close. There is, for precisely, one more. Fifteen pages near the end remain untouched by the damage. The checkered grid forms a structure of passages, breaking the case into subtasks to accomplish. Once all the tasks are accomplished, the case is complete. Sadly, the ledger only comes with an old, worn-down lead pencil. It's unfitting of this monumental event. Okay, so we can say, so the lieutenant looks at his blue notebook. The two fat, shiny pens hang from the binder like large caliber bullets on an ammo belt. He's not really saying anything, just standing there <laughs> looking at them. He really doesn't want to give us no. a pen, uh, but I feel like we've got to, just to use ask your him. Just pencil. Don't be that guy. You're what? Gonna lose this shiny blue pen. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna give him his pen back, Jinx. I will. Okay. If I find another one, I'll give him his pen back. Know that I give this to you with resentment. The tasks you've completed flow out of the blue oblong pen in a brash freehand uncannily similar to the rest of the letters. The wording comes easily. It's almost robotically simple. A language developed for mental rigor and simplicity. Inspect the victim's body. Interview the cafeteria manager. It's not exactly poetry, but poetry would be out of place. A satisfying slash sounds across the paper. You're done, it seems to say. And you, and you. Things to be done, and things already done. The composition of reality. This is an extremely useful tool for a detective of the citizen's militia. Now all that remains is to name the case. No, actually. Any ideas? Okay, so we gotta pick a name for the case here. Uh, but you notice, like, the the very kind of logical way of this. How, we're, you know, you see logic as one of the, the key 
part of our personality that's talking as is conceptualization, but it's very uh, mental uh, part here. And this might be something that you, as your, if your character is more physical, uh, or if your character is, you know, more with the psyche, that you might not even do, and might not even be able to do if you're not uh, logical enough. I think the only reason why we're even able to go through this like this is because of our high logic. Uh, so you'd have a very different experience with this this book here if you weren't uh, a more uh, mental type of detective. Uh, we do need to pick a name here, though. I feel like Shit the hanged on a man. Stick. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the hanged man is probably a better case. It's too obvious. How about the furies are at home in the mirror? The setting sun? I don't know. I feel like the hanged man is fitting. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like this is like a... Not the direction we're trying to be a good okay, cop here, fine. Jinx. <laughs> Jinx really wants it called shit on a stick. She just wants to say that every episode. Welcome shit back. Shit on a stick. To the shit on a stick's case gonna figure out who shit is on this stick and why great that's great that's actually what i was thinking too the hanged man good strong name we have a very good name for the case now i'm going to start calling it the hanged man it's good to be sorted this out okay so if we had picked also if we picked anything else i don't think that our partner would have liked it as much. You guys wouldn't have become best friends. Yeah, and uh, if we want to become friends with Kim, which you do, because Kim is awesome, if y'all don't know already. Uh, if you want to become friends with him, then this helps. Also, we have I our first level up. Jinx doesn't need any friends. Jinx doesn't need any friends. Shit on a stick. <laughs> uh, so, you say all my cases employ a naming convention similar to what we used on ours? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say that. Yes, how very childish of you. In your and my defense, almost everyone in the RCM uses the titular system, in addition to the official alphanumeric. It's a holdover from the early days of the RCM, right after the revolution, when the organization had little idea how to do things. It persists in an unofficial capacity. Officers use these titles to refer to their work among themselves. Your secret is safe with the rotten cabbage of papers in your hand. Writing covers almost all the pages. You don't exactly close them, so much as distance yourself from the smelly papers. They're a little further from your nose now. In the back, you see thin, translucent copy of paper, some neon yellow, some bright red, all covered in boxes, like marching armies. These look like official forms, waiting to be filled out. Then rip them from the binder and hand them out, according to type of form. Three, the topmost are misconduct fines, the middle ones are station calls, and the bottommost are field autopsy forms. Each is easy enough to make sense of. You don't have to be an intellectual giant to do police work. A monetary penalization ranging from 20 to 250 real. Severe cases allow for 1,000 real, but that requires special paperwork. The details of issuing these fines are spread out over the rest of the fields, but they appear pleasantly vague. These are quite sinister in turn. They give a date and time for the person to appear at the specified precinct police station. Below the call are the criminal charges you risk by not appearing. A dozen pages of thin copy paper bright red in color. You see the parameters of a deceased human form waiting to be filled in. Age, sex, condition of internal organs. Yes, all that remains now is to fill those forms and hand them to people. Fines for wrongdoers, interview requests for bad guys, and field autopsies to dead guys. The rest of the stinking cellulose is much worse for wear. Being sandwiched between the board and the rest of the paperwork must have spared the fragile copy of paper. It's made of dark blue plastic, hard enough to beat someone to submission with. The edges are rounded, however. The U4 size board feels thick and heavy in your hand. Light shimmers on its wet surface. On the back you see the embossed letters, RCM. Something rattles inside, ever so lightly. Is there? A hidden compartment? Permeables. It's not hidden per se. The compartment is made for permeable materials that would get damaged if something happened to it. 
The plastic shimmers like lapis lazuli, but it is not see-through. You cannot see to its center. With your hands, you four-sized pages hang from the clip, screwed to the top of the board. The acidic stench of rotting food is rubbed off on the cellulose. It now forms the base of the experience. This base surrounded by a faint air of spoiled meat, the stuff of death itself, and then sprinkled liberally with the citrus zest of toilet cleaner. Okay, so a lot of this seems like it's not important, but it is. It is important, uh, like especially going through these, these forms, uh, because we'll be able to use some of these forms a bit later because we went through them and we now know what they, what they do. Uh, so we have two uh, white checks here uh, that we're able to, to do. The first is a logic white check. Uh, can I read the case files now? We have a sudden 2% chance of being successful. And then we have an interfacing one. Open the hidden compartment of the clipboard, uh, which we're not very likely to do. And I think we're, we're losing some interfacing right now because I think that's the thought that we're working on or something like that. Isn't that the name of the thought? Yeah, I think so. Uh, so yeah, not a very good chance of, of doing that. So I think we're going to wait to do that one. We can always interact with this later and, and see what's in the, the hidden compartment. I'm sure it's something important. we got to figure out how to open it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think what we're going to do is, is do the logic one, try and read the case files now. It's proving to be harder than expected. You just don't have the intellectual rigor to patch the quilt back together. Try again later. Okay, so we weren't able to, to do it successfully this time. Once we put our, our skill up again, then maybe we'll be able to, to try it out later. Uh, but you can see that even with a 72% chance of success, you sometimes fail. Now, when I played this the first time, I did, you know, roll with, you know, some of the failures and stuff, but I also saved and reloaded <laughs> quite a bit. Yeah, there was some saves coming uh, when I played this the first time. Uh, so what are we doing next? Yeah, we're, we're going to go look over yeah. to the right there. Well, we also said we we're going to talk to the kid again about the trash. True. Uh, man, I, that's like almost the whole episode, just going just through, through the folder. Stuff. Yeah, that just shows you like the depth to, to some of this here, the story to it. Uh, let's try and talk to the kid here. And see if we have anything to say oh, about... Okay? Hmm. Okay, probably about the crime happen. scene. I think it's the crime scene. Yeah. The kingdom of Kuno? The fuck do you want with it? Yeah, Kuno doesn't know shit about that. That shit is beneath Kuno. Listen, listen. Kuno doesn't care about this small time shit. Just listen. Kuno saw what you did there, dumpster diving. Sad shit. Kuno could hook you up with some sweet rags. Shit like Kuno's wearing. Your size, good price. 500 real. Look, Kuno ain't seen shit lying around, except for that f***ed up there. Now, you want performance gear or not, Grandpa? Pig, these are foul modulars. Liquid fit, performance crotch, urban survival shit. Made in Mirova by scientists. Pants, scientists. Believe it, you need this shit. These could drastically improve your chances of survival in the urban wilderness. Coach Physical Instrument endorses these pants. They are tartan ready. They will also make you into an idiot. All right, Piggo, shit's rolling. Don't do business with the pig, Kuno. He's gonna steal all your money, Kuno. As you can see, Kuno and C don't trust yet. Can't do business without trust. There's more to his distrust than being a pig. He feels threatened by something obscure in you. What that is, however, remains a puzzle for now. Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. Kuno's Kuno. You already know that slow shit. Shoot that shit at Kuno, pig. Kuno does. Okay. So we're done with Kuno, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Again, there's uh, for every character though. There's so much depth to him. So like, it seems the, you you know who Kuno is and what's going on here with these characters. But I assure you, there's a lot more to it, which we might or or might not dig into in the playthrough. Uh, so we also talked about rather than going up here, guys, because I feel like this is a whole adventure uh, going through all this area because uh, it opens up a whole nother area again if you're successful with a a skill check. 
Uh, rather than go through there, since we've been working on this this trash for this whole episode, I think we should go ahead and talk to uh, uh, talk to the manager about who has access to the to the trash can. Uh, we can also talk to her. Didn't we have a question for her about why she was in the? Uh, I think so. We also need to use um, Kim's headlights to look at that. Oh yeah. Yeah, we could also do that. I guess if we really wanted to spend time on just this folder, we could go in here. Before you stands a motor carriage. The bodywork is covered in blue and white livery, bearing the number 57. Vapor emanates from the large engine on the back of the vehicle. It hasn't had time to cool off yet. This must be the infernal machine that tore you from oblivion. The Caprice Kinema motor carriage. In the cabin, you are welcomed by a set of steering levers, a radio microphone on a hook, a pull-out toolbox under the seat, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. All right. Ready? I turn, you press start. It's next to the preheater. The dashboard lights up with orange glow. The rounds per minute gauge jumps, and the engine of the Caprice Kinema comes to life with a whiny growl. The lights unfold with a little click, casting electrical light onto the ground before the vehicle. There you go. I'll turn them off from the remote once you're done. We just need to stand in front of the machine now. A metallic drawer slides out from under the seat and clicks into place. The tools inside are neatly organized. Take what you need, officer. It's going to be a long case. I'm not protective of my tools like some men are. He's clearly a little protective of his tools. But what can you do? Work is work. The pry bar feels nice and cold in your hand, heavier than you'd think. Useful for opening all sorts of doors and lids. The handles are long and sleek. Snap, snap, go the cutters in your hand. It's robust, weatherproof and well-made. Police issue, blue, lets you see things in the dark you would otherwise miss. The pull-out toolbox slides back into its nest. Preheater gauge casts a warm glow on the steering levers and the radio on its hook. The white suede feels luxurious under the touch and the metal clutch handle so very familiar in your palm. All right, so we're gonna use the light here. I took all the tools because you know it's a video game. <laughs> we might need them. <laughs> we not need. Might Just need them. Take what you need. Yeah, so we are gonna take what we need here. Now so, we have a level up too. Yeah, we haven't leveled up yet. We should do that. Uh, so yeah, now we have uh, the the flashlight, the chain cutters, and the pry bar. So those will be all useful to have. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and level up. And if we can, if we can get to it here. So we can put one point in a skill. Uh, so we can't put it into like the uh, the intellect or the psyche or the, or the physique or motorics. You can't put anything into those. So you're putting it into one particular skill here. Uh, so we have to figure out which one we'd like to, to level up. Uh, so how about shivers? <laughs> so the the shivers is like your fear. So it's like. Uh, I mean, you can read it here. It's the temperature drops. You become more keenly aware of your surroundings. Enables you to hear the city itself. To truly belong to the streets. It's supernatural ability. Old wrongs play out in present time. Okay, so no, this is not the one I was thinking. That's Half Life. That's uh, so Half Life. Is your your f f like fight or flight response? Cool so, for high strung cops. So yeah, this one here. I don't know how useful the shivers is. That's honestly, why I it. you wanted like <laughs> the least useful one for us, Jinx. I'm kind of thinking we should go with endurance because we have two uh, white skill checks that we failed true, due to lack true, of endurance. True. So, you know, I think we're going to go with this one. I think it kind of fits with our you know, physical but also intellectual build here. So, yeah, we're going to level that up, guys. We're going to level up our meat bag. Mm-hmm. And get our big old meat guy leveled up. As you hold your ledger's clip under the headlamp, an iridescent hologram appears. A street grid and the veins of a great river. A familiar sensation washes over you. There she is. Revachol West. Around the borders of the watermark are dozens, no, hundreds of micro perforations. The rectangular watermark is overlaid with the logo of the RCM, and yet 
the major arteries of Revachol are all recognizable. They shimmer in the Kanema's headlights. A rat brazenly darts past you and disappears amongst the stopped lorries. In the distance, a child somewhere shrieks. A woman reprimands her in a voice no quieter than the child's cry. Ah, Martinez. Let me see. Right here. Oh, yes. Coal City. Le Royaume. The Burnt Out Quarter. There are many of them, and they are divided into three separate rows. The first row has 18 dots. The next is the longest. It runs all the way around the border, and then some. There are so many, it's hard to count. More than 150, at least, maybe even 200. The last row has three perforations. That's it. Those are perforations. They represent your record as an officer of the RCM. They are your statistics, as it were. I should have guessed you'd keep a record. Officers often do. Let's take a look. Alpha male officers who are proud of their numbers often do. It's meant. The first row represents your years of service. 18 years. Okay, not bad at all. What did you do before you volunteered? Okay, so which one do you think we should go with, Jinx? Um, let's see, probably a boy. Got drunk like a megastar? <laughs> I feel like I just went around apologizing all the time. That sounds sad. Let's I, do that one. <laughs> I, I think we kind of probably got drunk like a... Me oh, that's another uh, one of the routes. You know how I told you there's the hobo cop, mm -hmm. the superstar cop. There's also the sorry cop. They're just feeling sorry all the time. Yeah, it's somebody who just walks around and just says sorry all the time. So you notice we haven't said sorry to anybody yet. True. But if we had said sorry to somebody... Uh, then we would have gotten like a thought process to be able to become the sorry cop. Yeah, we can get drunk like a megastar. Yeah, we, we got drunk like a megastar, of course. What else would we do? Yes, that does seem quite likely. Your youth coincided with some heady days for Revachol. But let's move on, shall we? This next row, the one that wraps all the way around, is your number of closed cases. Closed is good. It means finished. You've got, let's see, wow, more than 200. It's quite a lot, even for someone who's been on the force for nearly two decades. Usually, clearing more than 10 cases a year puts you in the 90th percentile of all RCM officers. Call it what you want. You were a valuable member of your precinct. Now, let's look at the last row. Right. Those are your confirmed kills. You've got precisely three perforations there. For an RCM officer, especially Precinct 41, which is in the Jamrock Quarter, it's rather tame. I mean that in a good way. There are certain officers who treat their kills like some kind of ghoulish game. If they do happen to solve a case, it's usually by accident. But it seems as though you are, or at least were, one of the good ones. So we have that to be thankful for. Yes. Yes. Right, I'll go turn off the lights. Okay, so we learned a lot about ourselves. We were at one point a really good cop. Uh, we aren't anymore, obviously. <laughs> and it stopped raining. And it stopped raining, I didn't even notice that. Yeah, it stopped raining, I think, at a specific time here. Uh, you'll notice that happen uh, in the game, you know, that as the time goes, the weather will change. Uh, obviously, the time of day changes as well, you know, it gets dark. Uh, and the things that uh, the people are doing will change too. Uh, so that, that's why time is, is pretty important overall in the game. So let's go ahead and go back inside here. And harass the manager some more. Yeah, we're going to end this off by talking to the manager one more time about that trash can. And we are getting a lot done here, but you'll see that it's... Very contained. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's... There's a lot to this game, guys, and if you really kind of dig into it and do everything uh, and try and actually solve the case, uh, then you'll find yourself uh, probably getting in the 20-something hours in order to complete the game. That's how long it took for me, and I did I did just about everything I could. All right, so let's go run over and talk to this guy here and, and bug him some more. <laughs> hey, it's me. It's me. Can I help you? 
Thanks. I hope you found what you were looking for. How strange. I certainly didn't put them there. The Trash Collection Service, CS Municipal. I don't see why they would put anything in the trash, though. Ah, the elusive CS Municipal. I doubt we'll be able to track down who was sent here last and when. This will have to be one of those little threats that solves itself down the road. Thank you, anyway. Sylvie had the keys before I got here, and I can vouch for her. I can vouch for all my stuff. None of us would tamper with the crime scene. Yes? Absolutely out of the question. Absolutely in the question. First we find a sad banger. Then we sing this place to shit. Your body is ready, sire. So I had to say that since Jinx <laughs> really wanted to. Yeah, we're going to sing this place to shit. I wonder what this option what is. Thing? Oh yeah, we'll go ahead and ask him about these. Yes, not the whole damn union, thank God. Just the nastiest and loudest faction. They come here in the evenings. Dumb, unruly types. Think they're big shit. But they're good customers. They place big orders and always pay on time. We should find out who this Lord faction is occupying the booth. Lordness means talkative, and we need info. We don't. We have to wait. They'll show up sooner or later. Men get hungry, even striking men. If not today, then they'll be here tomorrow. There are these things called days. You sleep between them. He's saying they'll come after you've slept. Just making clear you got that. What are you, a cook now? That's none of your business. He wasn't pan-fried. He was lynched. What could the kitchen possibly have to do with... Fine, okay. The kitchen is closed until 1pm because the cook is working. You can snoop around after that, if you must. What? By the way, you should come back to this thing-based questionnaire if you see anything interesting in the whirling later. Okay. You see how our logic treats us like yeah. we're a moron? What a jerk. Just completely disrespectful. That's why I don't like the guy. <laughs> uh, so you're saying you avoid logic? Yes. Jinx? <laughs> <laughs> my, I think my character would be much, much different. Yeah, I think you would have a more like psyche based character. Mm -hmm. If I had to guess, you'd probably put a lot of points in the st empathy. stuff up here. Yeah, the, the empathy is actually incredibly useful, by the way. Yeah, put more points into to the empathy and, and uh, suggestion. Yeah, I'm, I actually want to put more <laughs> points in suggestion. Our suggestion is garbage. Of course, we have those clothes on that that isn't helping. True, we need new clothes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do need new clothes. Uh, there's a, there's a couple of different shops where you can buy clothes. You also find a lot of them as well. Uh, by the end of this, we should have a, a huge selection uh, of clothes here. And what is this here? Is this the pen we got from? Yeah. Okay, yeah, this is pen. Let's see if there's anything else here. All right, so we're actually going to have to end the episode here. Uh, you know, we made some progress in the investigation, but most importantly, I think we found out a lot about ourselves, learning about who we are as a person. I so hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, make sure you leave a like on it, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. Do hope to see you guys on the next episode, and thanks for watching.